Well, 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 well. You're listening to Gloves Off with Professor Butron. All right then, I me say words on point, straight forward. No dream on job, but everybody forward. Issues, facts and solution. Get it at gloves off with Professor Mutron. All right, what other that thing is a revolution. Get it on point with Professor Mutron. Gloves off, no nonsense issues. Politics, community, a better man for Laredo. Gloves off, a revolutionary show. With everything that you need to know. With Professor Mutron. Watch ya! Following political paid advertisements do not reflect the political opinions of the program or its associates. Any political campaign or candidate who wishes to purchase advertising can do so. Advertising is open to all on behalf of Gloves Off. We're back at your gloves off. I'm Professor Buitron. I'm here with Hector Patino, who's running for City Council District 7. That's right. How are we doing today? Good. Thank you for inviting us. And no, thank you, and I'm glad to see you in good health. And Thank you. And that's the reason why we're wearing the mask. Yes. Yes. And um, how are you doing? How was that good. experience? Uh, I hope it was. Well, I want to, first of all, I want to... Uh, Ask people to continue praying for all the people who continue to, you know, be fighting Corona 19 on, on the hospitals and uh, pray for all of them who are trying to recover from it. And also pray for the frontline workers, the nurses, the doctors. I want to thank uh, Dr. Mateo Reyes and Doctors Hospital and the Rural Medical Center for what everything is, for their, everything that they're doing because it's a lot of work and uh, they're doing an awesome job. And uh, those individuals who go in there every day to the COVID unit. It's tough, it's difficult, it's a lot of work. And then putting their lives, you know, before us just to save someone's life. And it's, 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 a, special, it's a special thing that they're doing. So. You know, talking about our frontline officers, firemen, our nurses, you guys are doing a tremendous job. We got some great people out there. Yes. And hopefully don't don't you all ever think that we don't love you because we're the ones that are behind you. That's right. When it comes to first time responders, we're there behind you. Yes. Whatever you all need as a community, we're there. Now, changing the subject just a little bit. Yes. You wrote down your name again to write the to run. Why? We're running for three reasons. Uh, uh, leadership, public service, and uh, agents of change. Leadership is that individual that brings new ideas, new vision, and is able to work with other people and, and make projects happen in, in your community. Public service is about serving your community. It's about giving yourself 
And an agent of change is what District 7 needs. Someone who comes in and changes things. And this is the reason that I'm running for. Um, I did two things, you know. From all the candidates that are running, they don't have that experience of leadership, public service, and agent of change. 2008, I was able to bring drug court to Webb County for the first time. And I worked with all county officials and city officials to make that happen. And what it is, drug court was a new system of working with uh, the court system. And it was a therapeutic approach to the justice system. Rather than sending individuals, I worked with Raul Vasquez, Emma Salinas, and they would send individuals. I saw an individual getting a, a sentence for 10 years to prison, TDC, for a, a robbery charge. And so I was able to bring the drug court that today, you know, Hugo Martinez has the juvenile drug court. Judge uh, uh, Victor Villarreal has the DWI drug court. Uh, District Judge Monica Nutson has the mental health drug court. You know, Judge Palomo has the Veterans Drug Court. Uh, Judge Hale has the Regional and the Adult Drug Court Program. And so, do our programs that we were, I was able to bring a thousand families was were able to serve. That today they are sober. You know, we focus on mental health, focus on substance abuse, focus on a holistic approach to s serve these families. Not only put them back in prison. Not only did we save taxpayers money because they didn't go back to prison or back to the jails and waste that money, but we were able to save their lives. You know, the other program that we was able to bring was the FACE Coalition, where over 100 social programs agencies got together because in the past, agencies used to have services but wouldn't communicate. And so once a month, we created this uh, luncheon for all the social programs, so we called it FACE Coalition, got them together, and MHMR, SCAN, and all these other different social programs were able to start talking to each other and really help our community. And so this is the this is leadership, this is public service, Paul. This is the uh, agent of change that we're bringing into the table. Absolutely. Now, here's something that I'm gonna say, because drugs, it doesn't prejudice. It That's attacks right. all ethnic groups, all creeds and all social levels that's and right. that's something that we we really have to fight and we have to fight them in within our community yes. now talking about your area your part your district the one that you're running for um what are the main changes that you want to bring into that area one of the one of the, right now you know not to talk about corona but going back to the situation that we're all in there's a lot of businessmen a lot of small businesses suffering right now, Paul. And the city continues to say they're pro-business, but they have so much red tape that it makes it really hard for a small business to make it. And so the change that I wanna bring is, not only do we preach, you know, there's all these candidates talking about we're gonna do this and promises, but it's about actually doing something where we cut all that red tape. You know, I work with a lot of businesses in Mines Road where they wanted to put, I had a businessman who called me and said, Hector, I wanna, I want to put a, an import-export business, but I got this council member, the current council member from my area, who does not allow me because he wants a walking trail, a bucking trail, in the middle of the street Well, 18 wheelers are coming in and out. And so I had to fight the city. I had to go to city council. I had to fight the current you know, council member to allow this business plan, put his business in my world. And that's the type of change that we want to bring. You know cutting all that red tape, all the policies that rather than help, uh, it hurts the business, the small businesses that are trying to trying to come to Laredo. And there's a lot of businesses that want to come to Laredo. And so one of the platforms that we're looking at is to create a uh, technology park district. And this is 250 acres where, our, you know, Amazon, you know, all of these high tech co companies can come into Laredo and put their business to work. And we can give them a tax investment or any incentive so they can come here and create high paying jobs for the, you know, to our community. And it's sad, but Webb County is one of the poorest counties in Texas, one of the poorest counties and a lot of the other counties. And so it's because leadership is not there. We're not bringing in new vision or new, uh, new jobs to create this kind of projects. And so this is one of the projects I wanna work on, jobs, helping our community you know, having new paying jobs, creating businesses, you know, having, uh, being prosperous. And so that's one of the major 
you know, proposals that I'm proposing. Another change that is very important for District 7, it's public safety. And one of the, one of the issues is, as you know, the traffic in there, Paul, and there's not a safety plan in place. I talked to, I've been talking to every council member from that area since Jerry was there. Jerry Perez, Jose Valdez, Juan Chavez, Jorge Vera, George Alkett, and I sat with them and I told them, we need a safety plan. Where, how do you evacuate 50,000 people from that area in case of an emergency of a chemical <laughs> spill? Yep. Not only that, how do you protect the firefighters and the police officers it's, should that happen? Right now, the International Bridge and World Trade Bridge, they shut down and the 18 wheelers are up all the way to Loop 20, all the way to HEB Plus, or they go all the way to Mines Road, all the way to Green Ranch. And the traffic is stopped with all those 18 wheelers there. What if a chemical spill happens? Road Trade Bridge is allowing chemical vehicles to go through that International Bridge. And what if something happens? Are we ready for something like that, Paul? We're not. We're not to we're not ready because if we need to evacuate that area, how long is it gonna to take to evacuate fifty thousand people from that area if you need to evacuate them because of a chemical spill? You know, um, twenty years ago there was a group called Vida with Dr. Hector Farias, a a great individual that fought a true watchdog in this area. And I remember sitting down in one of his talks and he was talking about how many chemicals were being stored that did not meet e EPA standards. Right. And they'll continue being stored because all of a sudden, guess what, there was a loophole that the company that brought them here no longer existed in Mexico. Right. So they were being stored here indiscriminately, who knows how long. So his concern was what happens? This is, you're talking about 18, 20 years ago. Now let me ask you this. Okay. What happens when there's a chemical spill? Do you think that there has, hasn't been any chemical spills? I'm pretty sure there has. They don't call the city anymore. They don't call the fire department anymore. They call the private company to come in and do that work because if they call the city, it goes in the news. They don't want that to come out. But chemical spills are happening as we speak and man's road. And that's the danger. Okay, let's say they can take care of it for whatever reason, they can, they can resolve that issue. But what if? It's a chemical spill that it becomes a chain reaction and it's bad and they're not calling the city and they're not calling the fire department and they're not calling PD to protect the community. So there's not a safety plan in place. How do you alert 50,000 people from that area, evacuate them? How do you do that? You know, the problem that I see and the problem that I see for long, a lot of issues with the city. We have a rollover of city councilmen. You name Yes. Six people right away. Yes. Just in that area. Yes. Since 2000 to now. And uh, when you think about it, you're like, what's going on? Now, how come this problem has continued? They've either been kicking down the can, That's and right. I don't think it's a councilman. It's the other departments. You see, we rolled over mayors. We rolled over city managers, councilmen as well. But we have never rolled over department heads. They're the same department heads all over. He screws up in this department, well guess what, he becomes the assistant director of this other department. They screw up in this department, he becomes a director in the other one. Right. We need to change that, to yeah. change the view and the direction of the city. Without that root, right. uh, what is it, root, uh, root uh, when they root the, the, the ranchos, you know, they, they root plow the whole entity, right. there's not going to be no growth. That's right. And that's exactly what happens here. We have stagnant directors, and they're the ones that are actually keeping behind the city. Right. And they'll say, okay, you're going to be there four years, whatever. They'll remove you. If you're very vociferous, they go against you, and they'll put, put, put you out and put somebody else in there. And unfortunately, that's what's happening with the city. Now, there's something that you said, and that's small businesses. Yes. Well, small businesses under this direction have been bullied into submission. Some yes. of them are standing up and saying, I'm not going to take it anymore. That's right. And uh, the and, ones that you know what? The perfect example, you know which one is it? And it's really sad that it, the radio came on the news for a girl, a young girl getting arrested for doing nails, Paul. For doing nails. And not only that, they had a task force 
you know, they got surveillance. She was under surveillance. They got an undercover uh, officer. They wasted so much money on getting a, a girl trying to go to school, pay for a way to college or support her family. So for selling nails for 20 bucks, they had a whole task force created for that. Why is the city creating a task force to arrest individuals like that when there's drugs in our community? When there is corruption in our community, investigate that. Go no. work in those cases. No, absolutely. And that's what I've always said. If they would put 1%. That's right. 1% of the 100% that they use to stop people without masks, to stop businesses that were doing, trying to make a living like this young lady. There were two, actually. If they would do that to 1% out of that 100% to stop drugs, we'll be drug-free here in Webb County. That's right. But they don't do that. That's right. You see, the bullies in blue have continued to bully small businesses left and right. And they have to stop. They have to stop. Now, changing from the bullies in blue, let's talk about how would you handle that going in there? I think that uh, th there has to be a change. And, you, it, and it's about leadership. You have to come in. And right now, and, and I'm sorry, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to speak my mind there's too many liberal groups right now in Laredo, and city council is listening to that. And a perfect example is painting the street. They were they were discussing painting the street for four hours, you know, and then took several meetings from city council. Why are we discussing that? One, it is not part of the city charter. It has no ordinance. So city council cannot authorize something that it is not in the city charter. And so they were discussing it back and forth when in the first place, it doesn't have something in place for those conditions to be. I think the city needs to go back to governing versus listening to these liberal groups about their political position. It is not the city's business to put a political position, especially to disrespect the federal judges in front of the federal court what the federal government is doing. And so the city needs to go back to governing and we need leadership. And this is why we're running. We need someone who has leadership, someone who is a public servant, who serves our community, and someone who is an agent of change who can come in and say what it is, how things are. And there's too many businesses suffering right now. There's a lot of families suffering right now. A lot of people without a job. And rather than the city focusing on, on a girl who is putting nails, they need to focus on how they're going to help the small businesses. And I know currently they have this grant that they're going to help small businesses, but it is not enough. It is not enough. We need to do better. We can do better. I, this is why my slogan is, together we are stronger. When people unite, Paul, and get together, that's why these liberal groups are, are winning those arguments, because we as conservatives cannot get together and fight those arguments with them because that's what they're listening to because they go to city council every single month and they argue those points but where is the conservative group where are the people who really love this community where are they or the businessmen who are saying enough is enough you're hurting our businesses you're hurting our families and we're all without a job and we can't pay our bills and that's what city council needs to hear you know, those are some great points that you brought in. But what happens, let's just go back with, with, with the groups that are there. Some of these groups have got us involved with lawsuits that the city has lost time and time again. Some of these groups destroyed a multi-million dollar project that would have brought Laredo up, which was a mall over some sewage water that what became, they had some frogs and they fought it as wetlands. That People forget most of the lakes in Texas, the vast majority are man-made. So where are we? Understand what I'm saying? Um, we've, we're listening to groups that entice us into lawsuits that we lose time and time again. Right. Instead of looking at the big picture and producing and moving forward. We lose opportunities, Paul. Mm -hmm. We lose opportunities to really help our community. We lose those opportunities because rather than to listen to the people, 
we listen to those so, so you know liberal groups and and it's sad and it's really sad that rather than listening uh to the people they listen to these liberal groups and let me tell you one you know the current council member you know from district seven he's the most liberal person you can find he actually went to austin and asked their representatives to legalize marijuana you know uh for the state of texas when he knows the state of texas is republican and is a conservative and most of our community in Webb County is conservative. And so why are we having to elect? And this is what, to answer back your question. Why is it that we as a community continue to lose those opportunities? It's because we continue to elect liberal people to those positions that do not govern. And rather than to argue and start governing and helping small businesses, they'll start arguing for hours about how to paint the wall or how to paint the, the street. And so those are the things that they lose. Don't lose focus. Let's start governing. Let's put good elected officials on those positions. For example, why is it that a commissioner is trying to get his her own staff to run for different city council positions so that she can have political influence? And people are not ignorant about those things. You know, but we need to start electing candidates that are conservative and our family values, and that they have leadership skills that can govern this city. And this is why I'm running, Paul. You know, it's opinions everywhere, whether you're liberal, you think this or whatnot. I think we all make the whole community. And we have to listen to all, all the different constituents that are in there. I'll protect the liberal opinion, just that I'll protect the conservative opinion under the, under the, uh, the First Amendment. And I'll, you know, that's the freedom that we have in this great nation of ours and because we're built by the diversity of it. But there's a difference between, <clears throat> they always use the word progressive. We're being progressive. You can progress downhill to the bad or you can progress to the positive. There's a lot of progressive. You can progress downward. Right. You can progress upward. We're still progressing. We're moving forward. Which direction do you want to take? So the direction that we are in right now and the way Laredo is right now, and this is just my opinion and the opinion of very many that, that you know, we talk about and many are there, the direction that we're going now, if we do not fix it, Laredo's gonna go downhill in the next 10 to 20 years. No, 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 right it's now. Not, it's not going anywhere. Right now we're in a, we're falling. We're, we're in a we very bad position, Paul. And, and let me give you an example. <clears throat> let me give you, give you an example. A council member who's an attorney who goes and tries to argue to defund the police department and then makes decisions on hiring or firing the, the chief of police, makes decisions on policy and procedure on police, then turns around and represents police officers when are arrested or are investigation, and then turns around again and then represents the defendants or criminals within the court system. So where's the conflict of interest? Where's the transparency? And why is it that these liberal groups are not screaming and yelling that that is wrong, but everything else is wrong? But why is it that they're allowing that? There is, a, there is a, a, an opinion from the Texas Attorney General that that is a conflict of interest. But why is it that people are not talking about those things, Paul? And this is why it's important to elect people that are going to govern our city and do the right thing. And that is to bring leadership, Paul. We have to bring good people to those positions. This is why I'm running. This is so important. Our city currently, right now, the way it's being governed, it is wrong. It is totally wrong. It is wrong the way they're thinking. Rather than helping families, they're hurting families. But the policies and procedures that they're doing, they tell you that they're pro-business, but then they give you a rap sheet of 100 things to do before you can actually open your business. So where is the pro-business policies that they're talking about. Currently, the city is waiting between 18 months to 24 months to give you a permit of a letter of occupancy just to open your business. Why? So people are going to McAllen and all these businesses are going to South Texas because they're losing opportunities in Laredo because of the way we are governing. And this is why it's important to elect people who knows how to govern our city. And, it's, and, and, and we need good people who knows what they're doing, Paul. Well, there's a lot of things that can change, okay? 
And I go back to the first thing. We have to root plow this land that's been stagnant for so long. That's right. And if we do not get, we will not till the soil, then we're not going to have any growth. We can change councilmen left and right, but if we continue having the same directors throughout all the departments. It's changed all over the place, Paul. Not only starts at the top, it's everywhere. We have to change. And if there's <laughs> directors who have been there 30, 30 some years and were refuses to change and are not willing to do things the right way, then you need to go. You need to retire, go home and do something else because the city needs to change its policies. We need to become a city pro-business, which brings jobs to Laredo and helps our families. That's what we need to do. Because at the end of the day, we need to feed our families. We need to feed our children. We need to be, and situation right now, it is a crisis going on. And rather than come up with ideas and policies to help the small business, they come up with policies and procedures to hurt the small business. So many businessmen have called me. So many small businesses have told me, Chupatino, we're suffering. We are suffering. This is hard. We can't pay the rent. We can't pay our staff. We can't pay the light because we can't open because of this, because of that. It is difficult. It is already difficult as our nation goes through this, pro this crisis, Paul. So rather than our city continues to hurt our businesses, why not change and bring new leadership to the city? Well, Mr. Patino, I know that you're very animate and emotional about your area and, and what you decide. If somebody wishes to help you in your campaign, how can they get a hold of you? They can go through our social media. We have social media, Hector, Hector Lee Patino uh, for City Council 267. Also, I have a website, HectorLeePatino2020.com, or they can also call me on my cell phone, Paul, 337-7307. Please call me, contact me. I believe together we can make we are stronger and we can make a difference, Paul. And this is why I'm running. People in District 7 not only need, we deserve leadership, a public servant, and someone who is an agent of change, who can bring change, who's done it in the past. Not only uh, being able to say and promises, no, 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 someone who's done it. I have been able to bring a program that no one else was able to do, uh, bring a, a, another social program, a space coalition, and we've been able to work with all public officials and be able to make a difference in our community. And this is the experience we're coming in to bring to this district, and we want to make the difference. And I want to thank everyone who uh, are, are looking at uh, our, our videos and, and are excited. And I want everybody to join our campaign. Well, folks, you've heard uh, Mr. Patino, and I can't reiterate this enough. This November is going to be a very crucial election an election that we all need to go out there and vote. It's for the protection of whether we're going to continue being a free nation or not. Understand that. We're wearing masks. You can wear your mask, get in line, go vote. Do not get swindled by this vote by mail. They'll rip your vote off faster than Clinton lie. So understand that. Till next time, peace. Following political paid advertisements do not reflect the political opinions of the program or its associates. Any political campaign or candidate who wishes to purchase advertising can do so. Advertising is open to all on behalf of Gloves Off.